Amanda. Some people don't understand what they mean. the word means ERP or the, the short thing here, enterprise resource planning, or in other terms, it's where your golden nuggets typically are from your company. So we talked a lot about the golden nuggets. I think we're sharing the target <laughs> to protect. And this is really where your stuff is. This is typically where your intellectual property is. This is typically where all your financial data is, where your contracts are, uh, how much discount you give to your customers, what purchase price you have, but also where you have your business planning numbers. So think about if something happens to those numbers, that could be very devastating for your business. It can be stealing, that's typically what we're thinking of, people stealing your, dump, your data. Please think about different or expand your view and thinking about what is a, if someone would manipulate your data. So all your business planning is based on the data you find in your ERP system and all of a sudden that ERP system shows different numbers. Higher sales, lower income, whatever is the trend. Your planning for the next fiscal period will be very much affected. So we're really living in the, in the time of corporate espionage. It's really not anymore about Joe the hacker from the, the nice student or the bad student somewhere with the long hairs, lucky strikes, coke, a pizza, and has just the fun of it to hack some company sites. It's really about business. It's big business. Big business on both sides or on three sides. You as the targets, them as the hunter, and us to help you to protect you. But all together on this side, on the good side, we have to work together to make that happen. So on Apsys, we are a little company focusing only on that aspect. And our founder, Mariano Nunes, by the name you can tell, we are not clearly an American company. Our heritage comes from Argentina, Buenos Aires. So we are more the gauchos rather than cowboys. He was in 2005 performing the first SAP penetration test. And he was looking on the technical layer of SAP, on the NetWeaver layer. First time ever, and he found within 45 minutes four major vulnerabilities. As a young man he was, that was exciting to him. You know, being a pen tester, you find your vulnerabilities immediately. He said, that's great stuff, I want to focus on. And now we are a big company focusing on, still, on SAP securities. Our vision is clearly to be the key expert in that market. To be the expert on SAP, on ERP security, business critical applications, to secure them, to protect them, to help you to understand what's going on. We want to help you to transform a little bit of your security picture you have today. As we heard before, you already have something, some work to, be do, to do on the network side, but I can tell you, you have a lot of work to do on your application side. And we're here to help you. We're providing you with some simple tools to get to the point where you have a much higher protection level than you probably have today. As said, we founded in 2009. We're living at the moment in Boston, Massachusetts, in the US with our headquarters. But most, inform and most important, our research center is in Buenos Aires in Argentina. We have over 30 people. We don't have so much people yet on, on the research side, but uh, with over 30 people not doing anything else than looking at SAP vulnerabilities and checking them out. We reported over 100 vulnerabilities back to SAP already, which related then to sub security nodes. By the way, who is here and know that his company is using SAP? Can I see you now? Don't be shy. Okay. <laughs> so for the others, uh, listen to it. Maybe it's a good, interesting topic for you to know and understand. I said we are quite some time in the business, so we have quite some nice logos onto that. And some of those logos typically are very interesting, as the Americans like to say, like an Apple. Or I, I think the Microsoft is the most interesting one, you know, having its own tools. And, uh, they're using SAP, it's a large SAP implementation, and we're helping them to protect their implementation. Same is for Apple. But also we have lots of European companies. We have Daimler. We have Sony 
I don't know. Sony has a loan of, of over 200 companies. We have about 10% of those already, the, the major brands of that. Uh, people like Accenture, Roche, Bayer, Siemens, Panalpina, so all names here in Europe. All names who have outlets here, or maybe even representatives of those companies are sitting on the floor at the moment. So these are our customers and clients we, we're protecting today. Now, coming to the problem, and uh, we really call it a problem, we're not polite calling it the issue. It's really the problem. The quote here is from one of the leading CISOs of a Fortune 100 company in the US. He did that just six weeks ago in one of our conferences we had together. He clearly said that every minute downtime of his SAP environment will cost him $23 million. So we, we're seeing that these kind of environments are really, really critical. Really, really critical in terms of your business is depending on it, everything. Other topics we we're talking about with the CISOs and CIOs of the world are we are spending already millions of dollars on security, and you come and tell us we're not secure. Our answer is simply yes. And we prove it every single time. We go out and check on clients. At the end of the session, I will give you an offer that you can also be checked. In the SAP world, in the whole application world, you have one phenomenon or one theory you want to follow that's called segregation of duties. What that means is that Gerhard can only do vendors, but he can't pay them, or he cannot raise an invoice or installing a new client, or etc. So you have one topic, user as a user sitting in one role. So the fraud is kind of limited onto that. So this is where people focusing on when it comes to application security very much today on that kind of control. We heard before about targeted attacks and that's reality. Maybe you, you have heard about the group called The Hacktivist, very prestigious, prominent hackers, attackers. They made a claim in late 2012, they will bring up specific attacks, specific malware, only focusing onto SAP environments. So the threat is out there, it's happening around, we will talk in a second about. The other side is really people like you will say, we cannot afford that any of our golden nuggets is really compromised. And uh, to take the statement from before a little bit more to the extreme, it is, you know, it's not about whether I can protect 90%, 95%, 98%, 99 99.99.99.59.69.12.9. It's all nice. In that world, what we're talking about, it's that one single instance which can decide whether your company is still alive or dead. We will show you today that with no credential, with nothing we know, we shut down your SAP. Take a large car manufacturer, or take a nice bank, or an oil and gas exploration company, whatever you take. They're all running on their business on SAP. You go through the airports, you see the, those billboards. Blah, 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 it's running on SAP. Now think about, I choose now the SCM, the supply chain management, I shut down. That's the threat we're working against. It's not about so much about the other stuff. It's still important, but it's where it goes to, where it really staggers up to. And then the other side comes in, where people are saying, look, we are a big company. We are a registered uh, stock company, whatever stock exchange we're living on. We have lots of uh, investors here, whatever is the statement on the financial side. We need to report our numbers on an annual basis, and that has to be audited, because so we prove that we're doing things right. So lots of the Excel auditing companies are our partners. They using our tool sets to inspect your SAP environments, whether they be compliant. 
So compliancy is another issue, and it becomes a very big topic for more and more people. Everyone who deals with credit cards has to have a PCI compliancy. If you look into the pharmaceuticals, they have to do many and have to comply many compliances and compliances checks. So the world is getting more and more regulated in that aspect. <clears throat> A little bit out of the box here. I said we're doing that since, since 20, 2005, and we have inspected well above 1,000 companies with multiples of landscapes or SAP systems in the past. And uh, what we did is we ran a, a little bit of a statistic. What are our key findings here? And please remember, we had no credentials doing that. We call that black box approach. So we have nothing, we don't know anything, we just know the SAP system is there. And we go there and check it out. And what we have learned. This is a nice statement, over 95%. As a matter of fact, it was 100%. 100% of the clients we inspected had critical and high vulnerabilities and issues on their SAP instances, regardless what they did before. And you saw the billboard before, we're talking as well about those companies. And this is not a, a surprise. If you have ever done an installation with SAP, you know it's a big beast. It's very versatile, therefore it becomes very complex and it starts to be big and lots of changes. So don't be shy about that, that you're saying, my job is on fire if I show that to my boss or to my company. No, it's helping your company to protect itself for what's out there, what's happening. Next finding, none, none of the companies have applied all of the requested security patches from SAP. And uh, what I learned being in that world now is that within SAP environments, the patch windows tend to be extremely long to indefinite. I talk to clients, they're saying we don't, we don't patch at all. They're saying we do it once a month, uh, sorry, once a year. Most doing it once a quarter or once every two quarters. And then they choose and pick what they think is important or what they have time for, or what they understand, or what is, hasn't been forgotten. That is then, Leading exactly to that statement Where again, most of vulnerabilities we're finding are very, very old and well known. So, and if my friends from Trend Micro are still here, they probably will say similar you have the very advanced stuff, but you have your old traditional stuff. People don't patch, people don't care, they think they're not looking well after their whole environment. So killing some myths, Mythbusters. So uh, SAP is only accessible from the internal, so why should I care? And I have my Fort Knox built, and uh, it runs inside the Fort Knox, and it's all, all protected, all safe, all good. Not quite. There's a little search service like a Google out there called Showdown. You, everyone can click it and do it on its own. And the response, you is the number of currently SAP systems directly facing the internet. And that sketch we captured here, it was 13,332 we could find at that very second. That sketch is a little bit old. I think we took it a few years ago or something like that. You go there and get a list of all SAP sites facing directly. And guess what? Very, very often, those facing sites have no protection. And if I say no protection, I mean they are installed standard. What that means, some maintenance functions are still available, and you go still to this 
field here to whatever you have there as a command line, whatever you can input it, and you input a couple of commands right through the browser, and you're establishing a user, a high-privileged user, you're entering your SAP system with that high-privileged user and do whatever you want then with that high privileges you've got. So we just did that, actually for fun. Um, last no, week after week before last, and we figured just one very large and very prominent system integrator in Germany, being one of those 13,000 odd, and having a clear vulnerability, which we talk now to him about. So think about it: if you're using a SAP and if you're hanging directly, there are some things you need to be to looked after to have a clean installation. Just coming back to standard users, you know, so many systems we find that have still the standard users SAPs deployed with just still activated, sitting somewhere in the corner, and you just use them. Like Cisco with CC, you know, this is the kind of stuff you have here. So, this is the oldest security vulnerability documented in 2002. Guess what? We're still finding that active, if you want so, in, in customer environments. So it's really the old stuff and the new stuff and the most advanced stuff you have to look after. Because those kind of hackers or people are trying you, they're trying you with the old stuff first. Because that's the easy part. That's well known, da da da, couple of commands, and they see where, how far they can go. A good statement we're getting all the time is, our SAP, SAP system has never been hacked. Hmm. How they can tell? Typically, the security log files are not switched on or very limited look that are running. If someone asks you, then, so how, where are they? Have you ever looked up to those? Mm -hmm. So how you can come to the statement, I have never been hacked? The only true statement is, I don't know. And think about the CEO of your company has to talk in public to the shareholders, to the people it concerns. Sorry guys, I don't know what's going on in my company. I don't know what's the security level of my big ERP SAP system. It's not a good answer to give. So being conscious, do know what's going on, it's critical. Talking about a real example, NVIDIA, I don't know whether any one of you followed that case, but the uh, beginning of that year, is, uh, it ran through the press in the US big time. It was well documented. NVIDIA is one of those, or one of those sub shops hanging off the internet directly. A Chinese hacker, and forget the word Chinese, because it could, be, could have been anyone, just checked on a couple of vulnerabilities. As I told you before, what you found? a major vulnerability, a high-risk vulnerability. Ex exploited it, proved it, wrote, wrote an email to NVIDIA. No reaction. Twice, no reaction. Third time, no reaction. Then he thought he must communicate that now to the world, that people who are going there, clients and customers of NVIDIA, to protect them. And that one, that was then the starting point of a big bust through the past. I happily can announce now that NVIDIA is becoming our next case study. We have just publicized it, and it's our, our client now. They understood clearly now that this, that behavior they had at the time is not helping them. So the, the, the damage they got on the name from a security point of view, from a relationship point of view, they cannot allow to have that a second time. They need to protect now their environment. Typically, you don't find those things going to public. We do know a couple of those because we're working with some of the audit companies, so know that. But it's happening. I can only tell you it's happening. It's happening here in Europe. It's happening in Germany. It's happening in Switzerland, in the UK, in France, in Italy. It's happening everywhere. It's not something we say, yeah, 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 it's the US thing. Nope. It's here everywhere. The next answer we're getting is, yeah, we have a security team. Mm -hmm. 
We have a SAP security team. Very good. What are they doing? Hmm. Day-to-day -day job, what they're doing is they're looking to set up new users, getting old users out of the system, setting up and defining new roles, associating the right user to the right roles. And sometimes it goes to that that you have to twice the, much, the number of roles than you have users. And that's what they're doing for their living. Also then they're looking into implementing new modules, new business models, updating them, upgrading them. They don't have time, no focus, no to have a, a management objective to check on the security side. And as we said before, we have the evolution of the threat. It's not anymore that people really going blonde and going out and just try it. They're going very, very tactical, very spearhead to what they want to get out. The technical layer of the SAP implementation has been overlooked since many, many years. The technical layer from a product or from a branding perspective, you can refer to it as subnet weaver. That's where everything happens. That is where when you typing something onto your console, and sometimes a database table responds with a value into your GUI, that everything handled and trans all the transactions established, enabled, and protected happens there. Security-wise, no one is really looking at that. And that is coming to that really, to the point is, it is an, not only a security gap, it's not only a focus gap, it's really an organization, organizational gap. We clearly heard that morning, IT security, they're running to the database, the OS, network underneath, that's where the focus is probably for you guys. Lots of you coming from the IT security background, that's where you have your day-to-day -day job. If you go to the SAP people, they look about things what we just talked about. If you then ask, so who is doing that in between, probably everyone hopes the other one is doing that or thinks the other one is doing that. I have a very bad question sometimes I'm asking is here. So, guess uh, we have a situation that we have a break, we have a leakage, we have something. Who would be elected from the management team to get because he overlooked that thing, because it was big enough? Just helping maybe sometimes to get the, the discussion more focused and understood that there is a gap which needs to be closed. So, a lot of threat now on you, <laughs> all the day, but we don't want to leave, leave you alone with that threat. We want to give you something into your hands to understand you can manage it, and you can control it, and you can get relief. The thing is called your Napsus Security Platform. And again, what I said before, three main things what we provide you to help you with all that very complex, very detailed, or very technical uh, issue you have to deal with. The first thing is visibility. Today, most of our clients we talk to, we have as customers now, had at the time we started the conversation with them, no visibility what's going on in the environment. Coming to the point, that asking, so how many SAP systems are running in your data center or in, in your landscapes or whatever? No single answer, no clear answer. Everyone was guessing around. So just the number of what you're running is unclear. The sheer question, so how is it connected as a next one, is close to impossible as getting an answer. One of the CIOs in uh, our last conference gave us a, a nice uh, idea how complicated that is for the companies today. So he was asking his people, the sub-basis team, to come back to him with a report of the so-called RFC connections, the connections between the sub-modules for his top five systems, so his most important systems. It took them over six months to get back to him with that 
to answer to that task. Four people working. You can imagine that not many companies have that many people in the basis team to focus on such a topic, which is a reporting topic rather than a production topic, keeping things alive, etc. So it's that complicated out there. So it's nothing again what is a, a problem of people doing bad jobs. Think about a SAP server has over 1,500 possible parameters you can set. Asking yourself or your company then how many of those you have. Then you have typically so-called three tiers, which means you have a QA one, you have a production, uh, 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 sorry, a development one, some have a sandbox, then you have the production environment, and they're all talking somehow together, are somehow related or not, and all those parameters of all those individual servers have a correlation to each other, and then you have changes. You can imagine, from a human being, that's extremely hard to control that. So it was time to have a real tool, to have a real automation to help people getting to that point. So visibility, we show the organization clearly the gap they have in their security today. That helps them to understand, this might be a big shock at the beginning, like the PUC from Trent Micro was talked before about, wow, it's a huge list. But with that list, you can now start to manage and to operate. That we're giving you, for each of those risks, a very clear remediation plan, step by step. So what you have to click, open the GUI, click, click there, click here, put value, save. So clearly, we instruct you and your team what to do to fix the issue. That brings you to the confidence level. Now I'm confident that I have my system, I understand it, I know where I am. I still have things in front of me to do, but have a good plan now in place. Now we're going to the side of controlling what we're doing. That means I have now my installation fixed, but now this, this enemy is, I have to look it after, which is called user. How well would our networks behave if we would not have a user on it, doing all those stupid things? So now we're checking on the user. What is the user doing? Is it doing right or is it doing not so right? Is it something we should probably put up an alarm that is something suspicious or uh, is all, all nice? Why is that data flowing every Friday that direction here? Hmm. There is no, no rule, there's no understanding in the company for doing that. Hmm. Maybe I raise a flag here and make people aware of it. In other words, you don't have to look after your system anymore. We're helping you to automate also the process. You can then look and, and focus on the responses, automated responses, or your private responses, your individual responses onto this. And you have a, cl a clear 360 degree approach to what you do. I like to make a picture of that in a different way, saying, we're sitting now in a car, we're entering a car. We have no visibility. Someone has blinded the, the windshield. I can't see outside. How can I drive safely anywhere if I don't know where I'm going to, what's out there? Confidence. How can I drive a car if no one has taught me how to drive that thing? Is it automatic? Is it shift gear? What is it? Is this a truck? Is it a bicycle? How can I? I need to be taught. So I need to have confidence about myself to do something. And the last thing is then, once the windshield is cleared, I have been taught and I, I have now my confidence, now I can control everything and I can control my destiny and I can drive to the destination I want to drive to. Now these are the three steps you have to go through. You have to clearly get first visibility. That's the first step you have to do. Um, how much you want to be in the control seat immediately the earlier you start on the visibility side, the, the sooner you get into the control side. So, to give you a little bit of a live flavor about what's going on, we have prepared a video. So my colleagues coming up here uh, to show you that thing. What we're showing to you here is, with our X1 tool, a couple of uh, scenarios with using our tool, 
how you can detect systems, how you can detect the vulnerabilities, and how you can exploit them, and what you can do with that. Takže, ďakujem za slovo. V tomto videu sme si pripravili s kolegom vlastne demonstráciu systému X1, ktorý dokáže odhaliť zraniteľnosti v SAPE. Takže tento nástroj je, ako bolo spomínané, dá sa povedať, penetračný nástroj pre SAP, kde dokážeme urobiť testovanie formou whiteboxu alebo blackboxu. Pri blackboxe je to testovanie takým štýlom, že nepoznáme žiadne užívateľské mená ani hesla. Čiže tuto, ako môžeme vidieť, sme vykonali zoskenovanie systému iba na základe IP adresy, ktorú sme o tomto systéme vedeli. Ako môžeme vidieť, systém nám našiel všetky bežiace inštancie, alebo teda SAPy, ktoré v spoločnosti máme. Následne boli vykonané jednotlivé moduly, samozrejme toto video je zrýchlené, boli vykonané tieto moduly, ktoré zistujú zraniteľnosti samotného systému. Zatiaľ sme sa nestretli s tým, aby nejaký subsystém bol 100% čistý. Toto je systém, ktorý je bežne používaný. Nie je to žiadne demo prostredie, je to reálny systém. A napriek tomu sme v ňom našli niekoľko zraniteľností, o ktorých vám povie bližšie kolega. Čiže po dobehnutí tohto skenu môžeme vidieť všetky moduly, ktoré zbehli. Pri niektorých je označené riziko červenou farbou, čo je vysoké riziko, alebo na demonstráciu je tam zobrazená aj bombička, ktorá neskôr môže demonstrovať túto zraniteľnosť. Samozrejme, po vykonaní tohto testu dá sa urobiť rýchly sumárny report, z ktorého je pekne viditeľné, koľko a akých zraniteľností v tomto systéme máme. Pri tých zraniteľnostiach, ktoré boli označené tou bombou, môžeme ich vykonať, o čo vám povie kolega. Tu na konkrétne teraz vidíte, akým spôsobom sa dá vypnúť SAPový systém bez toho, aby sme mali akéhokoľvek užívateľa. Vykonali sme jeden príkaz na operačnom systéme a vo Windowse vidíme, že SAPový systém sa vypol. Teraz si spomeňte na tých 25 miliónov za jednu minútu. Druhý príklad, ktorý vám ukazujeme, je prečítanie akejkoľvek tabulky z databázy, Konkrétne v tomto prípade sme vybrali tabulku užívateľov, ale dá sa zvoliť akákoľvek tabulka z payrollov, akákoľvek tabulka z payrollu, prípadne SD-čkové tabulky, proste akúkoľvek tabulku si vyberiem, viem ju zobraziť a dostanem komplet celý obsah. Tým pádom napríklad ochrana osobných údajov skončila a tam sú dosť vysoké pokuty. Posledný príklad, ktorý ukazujeme, je vytvorenie užívateľa. Cez jednu dieru na systéme si vieme vytvoriť užívateľa s administratorskými právami, bez toho, aby som čokoľvek o tom systéme vedel. Tu sú všetky oprávnenia, ktoré ten užívateľ dostal. Vidíte tam aj, že administrátor a... Je to vlastne užívateľ, ktorý má úplne najvyššie opravnenie v celom systéme. Následne týmto užívateľom sme sa prihlásili do SAPového systému a ako demonstráciu sme zmenili číslo účtu na biznis partnerovi. Myslím, že si všetci vieme domyslieť, aký je výsledok. Peniaze odjdu niekomu, komu by nemali. Zmeníme edit mod, vymeníme číslo účtu a nikto sa o tom nedozvie. V základných bežných logoch to nie je vôbec nikde zapisované. Ak náhodou má niekto zapnutý audit na konkrétne tabulku, ktorá sa to menilo, tak vtedy sa to dozvie. Ináč nie. Ďakujem. 
Ja by som k tomu ešte chcel dodať, možno, že to video prebehlo dosť rýchlo, ale tým sme len chceli demonstrovať pár zraniteľností, ktoré je možné využiť aj bez toho, aby sme vedeli čokoľvek o SAP systéme. Čiže nemali sme žiadneho užívateľa, žiadne heslo a aj napriek tomu sme ho dokázali vypnúť, prípadne z neho dostať nejaké údaje alebo zmeniť účet biznis partnera. Takže to bola krátka demonstrácia a odovzdáme slovo Gerhardovi. So thank you very much for this, uh, I think, very impressive video. And this is just a, a very short overview what you can do, very simple. What you can see is uh, all the complexity is shielded from the tool, so you don't need to be an SAP expert to use it. So many of you are from the IT side, but probably your CISO will going to ask you not to that's the future to maybe uh, even have a look at to those kind of environments, so extending your view to the application security. And uh, that will be probably a, a tool which will be very handy for you to look at the, the SAP side. Um, all those vulnerabilities you're seeing here, most of them having exploits, is just a very safe way to show to you and to your management what could be done with that. And uh, I think I can say uh, just a, uh, talking a little bit about our conversations we had with the experiences these guys from Ellison here had with our tool and why they choose us and we have now a successful partnership in Slovakia here together is really how impressive it is, how quick, how easy and how simple it is to get to the point and it being re able then the remediation process, the mitigation process and raising the shield of protection to your environment. So I said before, Vulnerability and compliance is absolutely critical. You need to understand before you start anything to do. Black box, white box, those are all just terms. Don't, don't think too much about that at the moment. Interesting for you is we do all, all the analysis. You have SAP environments running on ABAP code. This is the, the SAP native language or on Java. Uh, we do both. You have now environments using uh, the old traditional, I would say now, classic NetWeaver way, the SAP R3 way or you're going to the new world of SAP HANA, or you're using business objects, you're looking to mobile, we've talked before, all that is protected for you. We're looking at all the sub security patches, we're helping you to protect yourself here, we're giving you fingerprints so to protect, even if you don't have patched your system right now. We're checking all the interfaces, all the RFC connections, and just coming back to my story from before, where the CEO told us it took him a plus six months for people to get back to the A week later, we went on site with him uh, to do that same thing again, because he couldn't believe what we told him and what we kind of showed him here in a demo system. It was a, a matter of five minutes, and he had the report in more detail, more granularity in hands. So that's the kind of business value, business level we're giving back to you with that solution. Driver seat, getting a, the visibility, going to confidence, which is detection and response, you know that, and then advanced threat protection, which gives you the forwards-looking statement, so whatever comes new up, you're protected against that, even though the patches are not yet out. This is a very simple architecture you can use with our partner Allison here as a strong partner helping you on the implementation and the interpretation side. My colleague, Jan Hublička, or Jan, or probably south side, <laughs> uh, he's a native speaker, and me are still around for the next couple of hours here. We, s we have outside a little bit of a table, so if, if someone is interested to have a more closer look, you can come and see us there. But we also have an offer here for everyone, together with Allison, we'd like to offer to everyone who has a SAP in environment at home. And everyone says, yeah, I know, I'm good. We know that. Or, oh my God, I don't know how bad am I, or whatever is your thinking. The offer is here, invite us. We're coming to, to see you locally, two hours. We're bringing uh, our software, and we give you a free scan to five of your instances. And with that, get an executive summary report so you know exactly where you are. And with that, we can have a further discussion then how you want to go after your protection of your environment.
But this is just giving you the snapshot, giving you the first step towards visibility. Just talk to us today, tomorrow, whenever you feel ready for that. Alison will be happy to have the conversation with you. Having said that, I thank you very much for your attention and for your time and your patience sitting here. Um, if you don't have questions now or you have questions, Okay, you're hungry. Good. <laughs> so I think, uh, thank, you, uh, thank you again, and we're out there. So if you want to have a one-to-one -one discussion with us, please catch us. Thank you very much.